The church is created essentially to give God the glory. We're talking about the corporate gathering, the local assembly. There are essentially three things that we can do to exalt God. First of all, exalting God happens when we give God the credit. We give God the credit. We must, as a church, give God the credit for all the good that's done and give Him none of the blame for all the bad. Now, interestingly, this is what happens. We essentially give God the blame for all the bad things that happen. Why did God do this? And we take all the credit for all the good. There are some motivated people, but we still have to give God the credit. This is God's doing. He is the one that supplies all of our needs. He is the one that should get all the credit for all the good. Now, this is opposite of the culture, of course. Sing unto Him, sing psalms unto Him, talk ye of all His wonderful works. His wondrous works. This is something that God has done. God is the, the Creator. He is the divine author. He is the author and finisher of our faith. It's not us. It's not me. It's Him. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. Now that's interesting. That God is not choosing the upper echelon of nobility. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. Now, isn't that interesting? Totally contrary to what we think He should have done. And He's chosen the base things of this world, and the things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and the things which are not, to bring to naught the things that are. Why would God do that? Well, verse 29 that no flesh should glory in His presence. Now that's pretty profound. The reason that God chooses the people He does to accomplish His will is because He doesn't want anybody saying, I did it. Secondly, we exalt God by being a distinct people. But as He which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. Here's what that means. The word holy means to be set apart. We are called to be set apart for God. We're not to be like the world. You know, ironically, what you'll find is you'll find the church. The church needs to be distinct. It needs to be separate from the world. But the church tries to emulate the world. Now get that. The church tries so hard to be like the people they're not supposed to be like. And when you go into churches, oftentimes, they try so hard to, to reproduce synthetically what the world is doing organically. They're just out there and they are just being themselves. And then we as a church are trying to model that. Now can you imagine that? They don't do it as well as the world, by the way. The world does rock music way better than the church. So when people come in and, and they, they are enamored because of the music that the church plays, uh, eventually they're going to go out and they're going to find someone who can do it real well. Just saying. They do it better than us. But God has called us to be set apart, set aside, set. We're supposed to be different than them. If the church is acting so much like the world, and the world looks at the church and says, I already have that. We're not enticing them at all. It's when they come over here and they say, you know, I knew something was different. Your speech was different. Your, 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 your songs are different. Your attitude is different. Your perspective is different. I want that. We don't want what we have. We want what we don't have. God has called us this way. And thirdly, we exalt God by giving Him the preeminence. Preeminence. That's giving Him the first. We glorify God when we say, Lord, we're going to give You the very, very first part. Not the last part, not the crumbs or the crumblings. When you give God the first part of the pie and you give Him the biggest part. When you pray without ceasing, 1 Thessalonians 5, when you meditate day and night, Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, when we are saying, Lord, we're going to meditate day and night, we're going to pray without ceasing, we are going to give you more than a tithe, which is just 10%, by the way. So you say, I'm going to, I'm going to put more on top of that. When we give God the, the most and the best of what we have, that is what pleases God. That glorifies God, by the way. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise you, the Lord. We should be doing this all the time. And the way we do this is by giving Him preeminence, by being a distinct people separate from the world, and giving Him the credit for all the good that He's done.